relationship with people. Most people are in need of help in this area. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So we're going to take a look now on number three at some of the roadblocks to good relationships. This simply means number three. We're on number three now. Down here. Yeah. Right there. Number three. The word roadblock <coughs> simply means things that make it difficult for us to have good relationship. We're going to take a look at these one by one. And when we look at these roadblocks, you need to ask yourself the question, am I guilty of any of this? <clears throat> Do I need to change? Is there anything here in my life that is hindering me from being in good relationship or good fellowship with other people? So we're going to take a look at this one at a time. Number one here, is self-interest. A person interested in himself will not get along well with other people. <coughs> when you talk to others about yourself, others will certainly turn you off. You emotionally slap the other person in the face when you insist on talking about your own family and your own interests constantly. We need to be interested in others rather than ourselves if we are going to develop good relationships. Have you ever seen a person who wants to talk about themselves and their affairs all the time? They're not even interested in you. They're only interested in themselves. And when a person is like that, it's hard to have a good relationship. I can relate to somebody who has some interest in me and other people. But if they only interest in themselves, they want to talk about themselves all the time, it's very difficult to have a good relationship. So that's one thing you want to avoid now let's go on to the next point, number B. <coughs> mask wearing. You know what a mask is? A mask is something you put over your face. Now we have a, sometimes in India they, they put things over their face when they <coughs> have a holiday and uh, it makes you look different. We have a holiday in America called Halloween. Halloween and the children. The children will put on masks. Some will look like an elephant, some will look like a lion, some will look like an old man. They put something in front of their face. That's called a mask. But there are people who also wear a mask. And you don't, you don't attach that mask with a string around the, your head. You don't need that. It's your own face. Your own face presents one thing, but behind that mask, behind that front, the real you is different. Sometimes you can smile, <laughs> but behind that smile, there's a frown. But we don't see the frown. We only see the smile. People wear a mask. They pretend something, but that's not the real person. So that's what this is talking about here. There are people who are not open and forthright. They are not transparent. They wear a mask because they are not comfortable being themselves. They don't let others get close to them. They aren't genuine. They talk as though they have some hidden agendas. Other people who do not wear masks seem to have nothing to hide and you feel relaxed around them for they are open. People who wear masks definitely have a relationship problem. Some people you just 
feel uneasy. You feel uneasy because you don't know what is really in their heart. Their face shows one thing, but in their heart there's something else. So when people are like that, it's hard to have a good relationship. You can't trust them. Better to be yourself. Better to be yourself. <coughs> and then we come to the next. Jealousy. Number C. When a man is jealous, he is not trusting. He compares himself with others and tries to come out on top. He is not free to be himself. He has to be better than himself and better than others. He's not interested in you or your interest, for he has his own game of jealousy to play. Now jealousy, being jealous of someone, you wish you were like them or you wish you had what they had. Being jealous. Do you understand what jealousy means? Yeah. Being jealous of another person. When people are like that, it's hard to have a friendship with them. Very hard to have a friendship. Now we come to the next one. Number D, excessive talking. People who talk too much often have unresolved conflicts in their own lives. Now people who are always talking, sometimes it's hard to have a good relationship with them. If you want to converse with somebody, you have something to say, but there's no time because they are talking all the time. Have you ever been around people like that? Who are constantly talking, 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 talking. Now some women, they say that some women are like that. They're just talking, talking, talking. But I found that some men are like that too. Just constantly talking all the time. And when people talk too much, it's hard to have a good relationship with them. We need to learn to listen. Be a good listener. Listen to other people, what they have to say. Maybe you can help them if you just take time to listen to them. But if you're talking all the time, you won't learn anything. I have never learned anything by talking, but I have learned a lot by listening. So it's a good thing not to talk too much, but take time to listen to other people, <coughs> hear what they have to say. E, complaining and criticizing. Some people throw out negative signals all the time. They always complain about something or someone. Complaining about things, criticizing, finding fault. <coughs> people who are always complaining and criticizing, it's hard to have a good relationship with people. Have you ever known anybody like that in your life? Always complaining or finding fault, criticizing. It's very hard to have a good relationship with people like that. Let's go next to the next page. Go to page number three. page to number eight. Feelings of hostility. Feelings of hostility, some people seem to feel angry. They have a, a feeling of anger in their heart. For one reason or another, something has happened in their life that causes them to be angry. 
And people who have that feeling of anger, it's very hard to have a good relationship with people like that. If you have any problem with that, if something has happened in your life that's caused you to feel anger in your heart, <coughs> pray that God will cleanse you. Wash away that anger with his precious blood. Remove it from your life. Because anger, if anger remains in your heart, <coughs> it will hinder you from being the kind of person God wants you to be. That anger, that feeling of hostility, needs to be removed from our life. And God is able to do that. Possessiveness, number I, possessiveness. There are some people who want to possess or own you. They are strictly, they are sticky and attach themselves to you. They want all of you and all of your attention and do not want other friends interfering in their relationship with you. Have you ever had a friend who wants you to be only their friend? If you become friendly with other people, they're not happy. <laughs> they want you to be their friend only. That's a possessive spirit. People who have that kind of a feeling, it makes it difficult to have a good relationship with people like that. They want to claim you only to be their friend. You cannot be friends with others. And that kind of feeling <coughs> makes it very difficult to have a good relationship with others. Number K, manipulation. These people get others to do things for them, for their own benefits, but not for the benefit of those who are participating. They don't care about your welfare but will use you to benefit themselves. They manipulate you. Have you ever known people who will use you to do something that will benefit them? In other words, they come to you and say, now, Brother John, I have a wonderful plan for you. Like one, one man I worked for when I was just finished Bible school, I was working in a canning company. And this man came to me one day and he said, Harry, I have a very special job for you. And I'm going to let you do that. And he smiled and I thought, oh my. He's finally kind to me. Up to this time he'd been criticizing me because I was a Bible school student and in missionary work. He never went to church. He didn't think to feel much about God. Now he comes to me and he says, Harry, I have a very special job for you. And I'm going to let you do this job. So I wondered, what's that? So he said, come, I will show you. There had been a flood in our area and there was a lot of uh, wood and other things all over the property and it all needed to be cleaned. And it was a very, very hot day, very <coughs> hot. So he said, Harry, he said, I'm gonna let you enjoy the sunshine and be out and clean all this property up. And he made it sound as though he was doing me a wonderful favor. <laughs> I got out there in that sun and started moving all that stuff and it was hot. Oh, it was so hot. And it was difficult moving all of those things. It was so difficult. And by the end of the day, I was worn out. And then I realized that man was using me. He was manipulating me. He made me to think, oh, this is very special, Harry. I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this special... I'm giving you this special honor. It was no honor at all. He was giving me the most difficult thing to do. And that was to get out in that sun 
and move all of that stuff. Well, some people <clears throat> will manipulate our life like that. And they will make you think that they're doing you an honor and treating you with such respect when actually they have a plan to benefit themselves. They're not really concerned about you. They're manipulating you. There are some people who do this and do it a lot. And if you find people like that, the danger signal is be careful. Be very, very careful. Once they have treated you that way, don't let it happen again. And people who want to manipulate you and to use you for their own benefit, it's very hard to have a trusting relationship with those people. Prestige seeking on page four, yeah. There are many who are looking for prestige. They enjoy telling about the impressive places they've been, and they like to drop names of important people they have met. They're just constantly looking for ways to build up themselves and give them more prestige. Oh, I went to Delhi, or I went to, to uh, Amsterdam, or I know Brother Stamcism, or I know some of these important people. People like that. They want to name the places where they have been, the important places and the important people they know to make an impression on you. It's hard to have a good relationship with people who are always talking like this. And we go on here then. Let's go down to the back page. P, horn blowing. There are people who concentrate on their own good deeds. We should let others praise us. Often people who are constantly making remarks concerning their own accomplishments have a basic problem of inferiority and seek to help themselves in this way. People who constantly blowing their own horn, how important they are. Have you ever met anybody like that? Constantly talking about how important they are. People who have that kind of talk, it's hard to have a good relationship with them. I'm sure there's nobody like that here. It's just that we have to be careful not to be like that. Favor exchanging. <coughs> there are some people who will say, if you will do this for me, Brother Sism, then I will do something for you. You help me, and I will help you. And people who approach friends like that, if you'll do this for me, then I'll help you. It's very hard to have a good relationship with people like that, who are always wanting to exchange favors. Not very healthy. Over spiritualization. There are people who want to spiritualize everything. Often they hide behind a show of super spirituality and expression of spiritual terms like praise the Lord, hallelujah. Often these people don't want to open their lives. So they hide behind a show of spirituality or throw a spiritual blanket around themselves. Have you ever seen people who seem, they talk like they're so spiritual when actually they're not spiritual at all? It's just a cover. It's just a cover. So when people talk too much like this, you need to be careful. Be very careful who you're dealing with. Some people like to to make it sound like they're very spiritual when they're not spiritual at all. But they have something they're hiding. And some people who are so strong on holiness and standards of holiness, be very careful of these people because many times they have some problem in their own life and they try to hide that 
by their excessive emphasis on holiness. So we just have to be careful in the friends we make, the people we trust, and especially be careful about our own life that we're not like any of these things that are mentioned here in these roadblocks. I think we pretty well covered these roadblocks and it's a good way to check up on yourself and to be careful about friendships. And when we start in our ethics tomorrow, we're going to start into our, our notes dealing with good Christian ethics and ministerial ethics. I think we can use both terms. The ethics of ministers and ethics of Christians. How to get along with each other. How should we respect each other? How should we treat each other? So this is going to be very, very important. And uh, if we cannot learn to get along well with one another, respect one another, we can't really be that successful in the ministry. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to dismiss you just a little bit early. And uh, I've been needing to get some rest, so I'll appreciate that. If you will just have a little extra rest too. It won't hurt you to have a little extra rest, will it? So you're dismissed now.